Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Man Cave 4301 podcast. This is another episode of Rifles and Sirens, and I'm here with my next guest who joined the security industry in 2015. In November 2017, he was injured at work and sustained a significant injury, causing him to develop PTSD. He talks to us today about the event, and his partner is also here to give her perspective on how it affected the people around him. Josh and Tiffany, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks. So let's get, um, we'll get straight into it. And can you explain what sort of the ambiance was that night? Was there anything sort of different to what was um, going on? There wasn't anything different. There was uh, a couple 21st birthday parties and... Um, there was uh, a bit of an altercation between the two parties. One guy threw a glass at another one. I've sort of intervened, tried to... So I, I don't remember anything. I'm going off CCTV and what people have told me. And this is what my supervisor has told me. I've, I've intervened. And, um, yeah, pretty much six of his mates got me from behind, um, started belting into me, started jumping on my head. Um, and and that, that's... That's pretty much, it happened that quick. I was out, wow. out cold. <laughs> that quick? Yeah, it ha happened so quick. Um, I'm glad I don't remember anything. Y yeah, okay. Well, I, can, <laughs> I can sort of understand why. <laughs> yeah. a, a result of that, uh, I've got five bulging discs in my lower back. They pinch on nerves. So, like, my legs will go numb and tingly because of that incident. Uh, I'll lose, yeah, feeling. Uh, what else happens? <laughs> Uh, his memory is not as great as it used to be. Um, he'll tell me the same thing three, four times a day. Oh, well, so short-term memory loss. Yeah, yeah, I got diagnosed with that as well. Yeah, wow. So what do you remember about the incident? Like, <laughs> when you when you draw back on it, did, did the CCTV footage bring back anything? Nah, nah. Um, so it it was... Where it happened, it was like borderline on the cutoff period. So there was the CCTV shows me getting pulled by one of the guys and swung around. And then where I got swung, it was off camera. So it was that blurry. It doesn't bring back any memories anyway. Yep. So a little bit before uh, probably the, the major injury uh, occurred, you, you sort of, you can't remember any of that. So that's, no. that's pretty significant. So... I remember waking up in hospital at like 3 a.m. I think it was. Yeah. Uh, they were doing like, had to get a lumbar, lumbar, what was it? Lumbar, uh, lumbar puncture. Like they yeah. thought he might have meningitis just oh, with wow. the symptoms he was showing. They were accusing me of being on drugs. They were... Um, what? Yeah, they accused me of being on all these sorts of drugs because um, I was quite aggressive. Fucking head injury. Did <laughs> you... Did you not just come from work? Like, nah. Um, the hotel didn't call me an ambulance, so the hotel called uh, Tiffany to come and pick me up. So then, I'm um, perplexed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so would you were unconscious, right? For a bit, yeah. So once I come back to consciousness. Um, I couldn't, so obviously you, you're in the security industry too, you know how we have to sign on, sign off. Yeah. I couldn't sign my name, I couldn't sign the date, nothing. Um, and then the hotel or my supervisor, I can't remember what one, called Tiffany to come and pick me up. So they didn't call an ambulance at all. Are you subcontracted to this pub or was it the pub that employed you themselves? Uh, subcontracted. Right, okay. Uh, oh, I can't, I can't process that. Yeah. I mean, where, where, where's the duty of care? I, I think it was an insurance thing, really. Like, you know, ambulance get called, okay. their insurance goes up. Look, I will. I used to host karaoke, and uh, more, a, a lot of times you would be there and someone would cause trouble. The, the manager of the pub, they won't call the police. No. Nah. They'll send them in a courtesy bus home. Yeah. Right? Um, we... There was a guard that was spat on. They sent the guy home. They didn't call the cops or anything like that yeah. uh, because it affects their liquor license. Yes, correct. The more times that they call the police, it affects them getting their liquor license. 
and it affects them getting their license taken off them as well. That is it, it crazy. Is, you know, um, so yeah, and you know, police were getting called quite a lot to that venue as well. We had trouble quite a bit there. Not not like the valley a lot, but we did have an incident probably once every weekend. And then, you know, once or twice a month, police were having to get called. So I think they probably just thought, oh, it's a staff member. We won't worry about it. Wow. Um, and then I got home and this was when we were living at, uh, yeah, we were living at Clayfield. And we got home. I couldn't really walk up the stairs. We had two flights of stairs to get up. Uh, walked inside and looked at the cats and I didn't know what they were. So, like, my, my memory was just erased. Like, I didn't know what a cat was. Um, so that's that's when the ambulance got called. <laughs> well, so you didn't go straight to the hospital? No, I went home, yeah. No, because I, um, I had picked him up and uh, two other guards escorted him out and um, I thought, you know, oh, he's, he's just been in an incident and he probably just needs to, like, go home and just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. ...sit down and everything. And um, he didn't say anything the whole ride home. And then when we got home and I opened the front door, he said, what's in there? And I said, what do you mean what's in there? We live here. Um, and then that stray away was sending off alarm bells because I'm like, oh, my God, he doesn't remember that we lived here and we've lived here for over a year. Um, wow. So I called his mum to let her know that I was calling an ambulance to take him up. So, um, and then I called the ambulance and I was telling them um, what was happening. And he was just pacing back and forth in the apartment trying to find a way out. Like, he would walk to the front door and I'd stop him from bleeding. So he'd, then he'd say, I'll go out the other door. He'd walk down the hallway, which is a dead end, and then come straight back to me and try and go out the same door. It's funny now that you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it. It was terrifying at the time. It, it, like, it Where, is, we've had laughs. Yeah, and stuff like, I mean, it, in the moment, like, yeah, was, you, you would be in, in sort of game mode. Like, you'd be doing what you got to do. So once the ambulance comes and that sort of weight's lifted off your shoulders, what starts going through your mind? Um, well, the, um, the Ambrose came up and, um, he just, he stood near the kitchen table and they were telling him, come on, mate, we've got to take up to the hospital. And he said, no, I've got to stay here because he thought he was still at work. He was still in security mode. Like he had to stay in that <coughs> spot and watch what was happening. Um, we were eventually able to get him down the stairs to the ambulance, but he wouldn't get in. Um, cause the same thing, he, he thought he had to stay there cause that was his job. Um, so they had to call the police to help to assist him to get into the ambulance. And um, once the ambulance took him, I just, I burst into tears. Like I, I held it in for as long I as I could. I could not blame you for that. Yeah. I, if that happened to my partner, I'd probably do the same thing. <laughs> like that, that is some scary stuff. Yeah, well, because he was um, speaking complete gibberish as well. Like it's not yeah, like he was saying words back to gone. front. Yeah, it, English just wasn't, wasn't a vocabulary. <laughs> yeah, it just, it, yeah, it wasn't even words back to front. It was just complete mumble and straight away I'm thinking oh no he's got some serious head injury because obviously your brain is what controls your speech yeah I had swelling on the brain so it was like a, a bad head injury they thought I had a bleed um turned out I didn't thankfully so what was the first time that you can remember when when you can start remembering after the event when when does your memory start sort of kicking back into then the next morning in hospital, 3 a.m., uh, I got woken up to, like, the nurses doing just their normal stuff that they do, like blood pressure and all that. I think it was that, wasn't it? Yeah, he, because um, we got to the hospital about 11 o'clock that night and because um, of the way he was acting and stuff, um, they thought he might have meningitis because when we, when we got to the hospital, his speech was fine. He said, you know, that's, that's mum, that's dad, that's Tiff. He knew who we all were. Um, but then he started to go downhill again and his memory went and his aggression went up and he was speaking gibberish again. Um, so they did the, they put him, they had to put him to sleep to do the lumbar puncture because he was too restless. And then he was waking up from that and that's when he woke up and he like recognised who we were and that's when his memory, like that's the point that he remembers from. Was it a what happened sort of moment? Why am I here? I didn't know what happened. Uh, I don't think I did. Don't know what happened. No, you I, I you woke remember. up and you said, "What's this Lego connected to me?" Because he had all the colourful cables, right. heart monitor, and everything on. And uh, I mean, that was pretty funny. Because <laughs> I, I was just thankful that he could speak normally. I'm like, oh my god. Um, I think that's why though, because they they were 
accusing me behind my back of being on drugs to um, mum, dad and Tiffany. They were saying that they have to be honest about what drugs have taken because... Um, so you guys the, the told him that he got attacked at work, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they asked. They asked us. Well, all me and his parents were in the room. Um, is he gone? Has he taken any drugs? And then when his parents left, they asked me again because I was thinking, I'm lying just because his parents are there. Um, and it was just ridiculous. I'm like, he doesn't take any drugs. He does security. He can't. He was attacked at work. Yeah. Tested me for every single drug possible. Clean on everything. Did you say I told you so when the bloody <laughs> screens come back clear? Because I fucking would have. Yeah, oh man. <laughs> I was pissed off, but, you know, it is what it is. I, I wasn't really um, there. I didn't know what, what was happening. Like Tiffany said, they put me asleep for, put me to sleep for one of them because I wouldn't let them do it. Like, I was quite aggressive and stuff, and that's a head injury. Like, I'm not really aggressive at nature. Um, now, with the PTSD, I'm a little bit more aggressive than what I was. That's what I'm A little bit more unpredictable when it's going to yeah. sort of flow on. Yeah, yeah, it's... Um, yeah, so, up and down. how long were you in hospital? Uh, I was in hospital for four days, I think. Um, I got out. I think uh, why I got out is because I kept hassling them as well. I was like, fuck this, I want to go home, the food's shit. Um, and then I got admitted back into hospital, I think, like a couple of days after, didn't I? A week after or something. Because I started going back downhill again. Uh, I was... When I got out the first time, I, I couldn't get out of bed. Like, I was just bedridden for, God God knows how long. How long was I in bed for? Uh, I think for, like, the first 24 hours, he did not get out of yeah. bed at all. And when he did, someone had to help him. <laughs> yeah, it it concerns me that with, with, the, with the whole drugs thing, right, what, what other tests did they perform? Uh, they did blood tests, urine tests. <laughs> no head scans at all? I had head scans. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's where they found the swelling. Um, I I had to then... Oh, fuck. I don't even know what happened in hospital, really. What happened? Uh, they did They did an MRI, um, and that came back negative. Um, and then I think that's when they thought you might have meningitis, so they decided to do the lumbar puncture and test your spinal fluid. Hmm. And what, then they found the swelling... Or was that because of the swelling? They thought it was meningitis because of the swelling. I don't know. I'm they, not sure. I think it was just okay. his memory loss and speech. Um, like I think meningitis has quite a few different symptoms, and That's he must crazy. have been showing symptoms that we still haven't similar. been given an explanation on to why that happened. Like no one knows. I was on work cover for a year and a half. I wasn't allowed to work for a year and a half. Um, I had work cover. Um, reports, uh, not report, in independent reviews. So I had more CT scans. I've had um, CT scans in my back. That's where they found the disc bulges. Um, I, I had to go to a work cover psychiatrist. That's the person who diagnosed me with PTSD. Uh, I've had to see psychologists. And yeah, it's, it's just been full on for the last two years. Wow. That, that's incredible, man. What, what sort of... Um what sort of treatment did you start out with? Like, how soon did you get onto work cover and all that sort of stuff? Uh, it was like the next day, I think. Oh wow! After, okay, well that's day. pretty quick. Uh, no, I think I think it was like a month or so. It, oh wow! It, yeah, I don't think it was straight. I didn't straight go back away. to work though, yeah. so I would I would I would have been on work cover. Yeah, I'm not sure. So you'd you'd have to submit something to work to say that it was a workplace injury and all that sort of stuff. Um, how what how would how did the pub react to all this when they found out that you'd it was? I don't think they cared to be honest. Um, yeah, I, I don't think they really gave two shits about it. Um, my supervisor seemed concerned, like she was messaging Tiffany. Um, concerned for you or concerned for them? I, it was concerned for me because she's subcontracted too. Okay. So we were on the same team. So she knows the score. She knows, yeah, okay. she knows. Yeah. Um, the, the company, I went back to the company after that and the company went really just weird towards me. Um, they, I started off getting a few shifts and then they just sort of slowly dropped off and dropped off. 
Um, and you know how it is being casual. They don't have to give you any shifts at all. No. Um, so, yeah, I left them all together and I'm with a new company now. They're the best company I've ever worked for. <laughs> Did you ever confront them about it and say, hey, what, what's going on here? Like, um, I've got lawyers involved, so lawyers are working out what way to go about yeah. it um, with a, a compensation thing because of the whole, you know, you go go to work, you're meant to come home the same way sort of thing. Exactly, and yeah. Obviously, I almost didn't come home, uh, which was pretty pretty concerning. Um, but, yeah, w- the lawyers aren't sure what way to go about it because the people haven't been caught either that did it, so the whole group haven't been caught. Oh, wow. Um, so they were like, you know, we can... But isn't it, like they've, they've got CCTV footage, yeah? Yeah, this is, this is where I'm really pissed off at the hotel about. They've given the footage that's real blurry that doesn't show their face, where my, my concern is, or my complaint, I should say, is there's footage of them going into the bar every 20 minutes going to get drinks. Why didn't they hand over that footage? Don't, didn't they have the, the scanners back then? Not for entry? No. Oh, we're right. Just outside of the precinct for it. Oh, oh really? Yeah. So. Oh, that's ridiculous. Mm. I, I didn't know there was a limit to, like, an area where they needed those things. There's five entrances to the place as well. So yep. it just makes it difficult to monitor everything as well. Like, you, you can't monitor everyone coming into that venue because there's so many entrances and exits. Was there any reason why they didn't give the good footage? Uh, that's what I'd like to know. Yeah, it's, it's long gone now. Obviously, it rewrites over 60 days or something like that. Um, when I went back, I asked one of the managers why they didn't give that footage, but he wasn't the top manager. He was just a just a manager that just manages the place, and he, he wasn't sure. But he just said the footage that did get handed over to police was real blurry and stuff. So, Right. Mm. How does it make you feel that they haven't been caught? Oh, I'm fucking furious about it because I want justice to be served. Absolutely. Um, we know what school they went to and stuff, but I feel like police have just given up. Really? I, yeah, because I didn't die. You know, like, I feel like police only hunt people if, you know, it was like a one punch can kill sort of thing. Or one punch did kill, I should say. And because it didn't kill me, I feel like they've just given up. Yeah, I've yeah. gone... You hear about other guards on the news that, uh, I know there was one a little while ago that ended up in hospital and it was on the news and they were saying um, he's in critical condition and everything like that. Um, yeah, and obviously that's getting a lot of media coverage and the police are probably really trying really hard but it doesn't feel like they're really Did trying Did you thought about going to the media yourselves or...? I, I watch a current affair from time to time and, and you know I, I see that they're always looking for stories and, you know, like there's no harm in... In trying, you know, like, I don't know where it'll go. I'll, I'll send this podcast to them. Yeah, do it. <laughs> yeah, all right, I'll do that. <laughs> because if, if we can get these guys caught. That's that's what needs to happen. Like, you know, they, they could be they could be doing this every weekend for all we know. Look, and I, I work in the city on uh, public transport. And the amount of people that are just drunk out of their heads doing crazy shit mm-hmm. is phenomenal running out in front of the bus yeah. to try and stop it so they can get on it or uh, fighting in the streets. Like the, the cops in the valley, the valley's just is a cesspool. It oh, really is. Yeah, it's ridiculous. You know, I, I, and that's why I don't go out. Mm. It's, just, it's just mental. It's too dangerous. Yeah, people just get... Go to your local pub. It's a lot safer. Stay at home. Have, <laughs> have beers around a fire at home. Yeah, that, bring, that's, bring that's, your that's, own. Yeah. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> You haven't found solace in alcohol, though, have you? Hey? You haven't found solace in alcohol, though, have you? Like, like you, to you, help me? Yeah. Um, I turned to alcoholism after it, so I'd become an alcoholic after the assault. Um, wow. That was because I was up all night, so I was getting things called night terrors and stuff like that. So I'd, I'd It was a sleep sort of help to get to sleep. The thing, yeah. Um, I'd, you know, almost fall asleep and then I'd, like, feel like I'm fucking getting thrown across the room or... What? Um, I'd hear, like, um, glasses smash because that's the last thing I remember hearing. So I'd hear, like, in the back of my head, I'd hear all these glasses get smashed and I'd be like, fuck, I've got to jump up, you know, ready to fight. <laughs> um, so I turned to alcoholism after that. But um, um, 
on medication now to get me off the alcohol. So okay. I, I haven't. I, I just I'm, I'm a uh, social drinker now, so I'd probably drink once a week if that, and it's only a couple. Opposed to after the assault, it was like twelve beers a night sort of thing, and then I jump on spirits just to help me sleep. Yeah. Wow, that that's got to be tough, even for you, like uh, Tiffany. It's it's. Yeah, well, I've known Josh for thirteen years now. Right. Um, and the way that he has changed after the assault, it's just it's not him. Yeah. Like he was drinking heavily every night for about ten months, um, and towards the end of that 10 months he started to get to the point where he was just snapping over anything like I remember one night we had an argument because I told him my feet were sore and that just blew him off wow like for like for no reason and um I thought it was just because he was drinking um but he was never like that before when he like had had drinks and stuff um so yeah just it got really really bad like there was holes in the walls at home and stuff um, like, he never hurt me or anything, but it was getting to the point where it was really scary and I was going to leave. Um, so I'm really grateful that they diagnosed him with PTSD when they did and were able to get him on medication. That has helped it because since then, like, our relationship has been been fantastic. You know, he's obviously not drinking as much. So how long did it take for the diagnosis to come through? Oh, shit, I don't even know. Um it seems like a while. Like you know, it there was, was there was obviously yeah. a time there where everything was able to 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 manifest into this with this anger and I we oh, I don't know if we I didn't think anything of it at the time. I thought it was just I was just getting pissed off. I just thought it was normal. I didn't think it was a natural symptom. Yep. Um, I you know you hear about PTSD with uh, like my cousins in the army, for example. He's got it. Um, you don't think of, I, I didn't think it, it was possible for me to get it, just put it that way. I, I and that's the, uh, a lot of civilians don't. Mm. Uh, civilians tend to uh, associate PTSD with just veterans, but yeah. it's, or uh, emergency service workers, yeah, yeah. where it's not, not, not the case. And mm. anyone can get it. And one thing that um, really stood out with what you just said, um, is that you didn't know that you were going through these moods, nah. right? And your story now, uh, people listening, can identify with or can relate to that and possibly identify that, hey, maybe this is why I'm angry. Maybe mm. I, my traumatic express uh, uh, event has caused this in me as well and, and hopefully – they can go and seek some help for it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, no, that's fine. No, it, people need to be more aware that it can happen to anyone. Like, yeah, I, I thought you know I was just going to be below the radar, and that's why I didn't think anything of it. It's crazy how it, yeah. it actually happened. But what goes through your head when someone says you have PTSD? Uh, when I had the uh, independent review through work cover to find out what was going on psychologically with me. Um, I sort of had a rough feeling. Like, I don't live with mum, but uh, I have a very, very close relationship with both my parents. Uh, like, you know, we'll talk on the phone every day. We'll catch up for lunch once a week, stuff like that. Uh, and mum even noticed a difference in me as well. And she said to me one day, she said, I'm not a professional, but I think you might have this. She Googled some symptoms and, like, every symptom related to me you know, the not sleeping, the mood swings, the uh, the night terrors, like when I'm almost asleep and I'll jump jump out of bed. Uh, it all just connected at one stage. So um, then work cover sent me to an independent review to see where I was psychologically and they said, yeah, you've, you've got it. So um, I sort of knew that it was coming. Yeah. So it wasn't, it didn't affect me too much. I was just like, oh, shit. And then that was it. I just left it at that because I sort of knew. But... Wow. Medication's helping, though. So the yep. people out there that have it, yeah, you need to get onto the medication. As much, like, I hate medication. I used to hate taking it, but sometimes you have to. to yeah, I'm not a big fan of taking medication. <laughs> I hardly take Panadol. <laughs> like, that, well, it's the same as me. <laughs> yeah, 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 I just... 
yeah, not into it. Mm. I, I, I want to go back a little bit, and Tiffany, when you got the phone call to come and pick him up, what were, did you have any expectations of what had happened? Did they let you know over the phone what had happened at all? No. Or just come and pick him up? All, all I got told was, um, Josh has been in an incident. Can you pick him up? Um, I, I didn't know how serious the incident was or anything like that. Um, my first thought was I need to get to him as soon as possible um, in case if, like, it is serious or, you know, in case if it's nothing. Like, did, was that, did that phone call wake you up or were you already awake? It woke me up. Oh, man. So that, that'd be like you, you'd be all doughy and sleepy and, and like, well, what? Um, it's, well, you were always a light sleeper when I was at work, though. Like she's, She was always on edge when she'd go to sleep because she knows how dangerous it was. So Yeah, like my um, – I don't, I don't know how my body does it, but, like, I would know what time he's supposed to be home and roughly what time he crawls into bed. And if I, if I couldn't sense that he was there, I would wake up. And stuff. So, you know, as soon as like I know, generally the only calls I get during the night are going to be either from him or like about Josh. So mm. naturally, as soon as the phone went off, and like I knew it was something about about him because I normally get Josh to give me a call when he's on his way home, just to let me know that he's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it wakes me up. So. Yep. Tough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tough. Um, did, did you prove of him being in the security industry at all, or did it just generally scare the shit out of you? Um, well, my dad was a security guard, um, so, like, it didn't scare me or anything. I mean, you know, Josh is going to do what he wants to do, and he, he, he loved doing security, so yep. I've just got to support him in the best way that I can. Um, you know, I, when he said he was going back into security after <laughs> the incident and stuff, I told him, no, maybe you shouldn't, maybe you should, you know, Try and do some online courses, try and find something else. Well, you tried real estate, didn't you? I, I tried a lot of things, hey, and um, everything didn't work out. Um, was it concentration or...? Concentration, um, like I, I did I did a sales role at Harvey Norman. I, I lasted the six months until a week before my um, trial was up, or like my probation was up, sorry. And then my boss let me go. He said there's too many, like, memory issues and stuff. So, like, learning new things, learning new systems, stuff like that. You know, it's in one ear and out the other with me now. Um, so concentration is a big one. Uh, I've done security for a long time, so I already know it. So it's it's really hard for me to learn something new now. Uh, I did try real estate. I did the course and everything, and I just couldn't get my head around it. It was just – it's really, really hard to just – focus and concentrate like focus is another big issue that i have now i can't focus on shit um i just tune in and out i just go into my own world um that's why i'm back in security so i know it <laughs> yeah when, when you t said that you were back in security i was like okay mm, so yeah. and it got it got me thinking because i have heard once maybe twice that there are certain diff different types of PTSD, which are like a long-term PTSD or short-term PTSD. I don't know how true that is, and I thought, well, maybe he's got... It's pretty true as far as I'm aware. Yeah, okay. Poked up the ears, and, and, I, was, and I was like, maybe he just had the short-term sort of symptoms, and but it seems to be ongoing. I mean, obviously the medication's ongoing, helping, yeah. but without the medication... Back downhill. Back downhill. Yeah. And that's, it, it, it's really tough to, like, obviously I have to see, I've got another re review with this psychiatrist coming up soon through work cover, thing. I don't have to pay any of this, is there a fortune? Um, it, it's really tough to to know where, where they draw the line, because obviously I'm on, I'm on opioids as well, which are obviously addictive medications. Wow. Um, Painkillers because of my back, another opioid. And, and it's tough because... I can't take that stuff when I'm working because it sends you, sends you, like, you know, you just go into la-la land, like, you go, you just mellow right out, you just chill right out. Um, obviously, I can't be on that for the rest of my life as, you know, no, no one can be, but when I do go off that, I'm worried that it's just going to go back downhill because I've been told that I'm going to have it for the rest of my life. Like, the doctors don't think it's going. And I don't want to go back to alcoholism because then it's just going to yeah. go back to square one. Yeah. 
So, yeah, it's really, really tough because the medication I'm on, they are addictive medications. And then when I go off that, I'm just going to find something else to feed that addiction. So it's fucking like I'm doomed if I do, I'm doomed if I don't sort of thing. It's, um, it, it rings true with the veteran community as well. And I'd like to give a call out to any veterans that have gone through the same sort of symptoms or, and if you've got any ideas on how Josh can uh, help himself through, be it, be it meditation or whatever the case may be, whatever you've found, <laughs> Tiffany's like, yeah, you won't find him meditating. No. But I tell you what, I, I reckon there's some really hard guys out there that are meditating right now. Mm. Um, if, there, if there's anything that you can possibly help Josh with, contact me at mancave4301 at gmail.com because, um, you know, we can draw off each other's stories and uh, the whole purpose of this is so that people can help others. Um, their experiences and the treatments and, and all the stuff that they've done to combat their PTSD or depression or whatever the case may be, the, the tools that they've gained from, from that can help others uh, to give other people avenues to go down to try themselves. Not everything might work for others, but someone's might. I, I've, um, so work cover sent me to a psychologist as well to get treated for PTSD. And I had to, so I went through rapid eye movement, I think it's called. Um, that didn't work. Or rapid eye or something. That didn't work. Um, then I, they told me to download an app on my phone and it's a veteran. It's made by veterans, apparently, that have gone through PTSD. And there's a bunch of... Um, What's that called? I'd like to get the name of that. Yeah, I'll, I'll get it. The app that Josh is referring to is cbt I coach yeah so if there's anybody out there that um might have some solutions feel free to contact me it, it was it was pretty much an app that had a bunch of um tools in it that are meant to help you and uh like you said with the meditation side of things and stuff it it had that sort of stuff in there um but my concentration is not there and you need to sort of tune out and you know, they say it's only 10 minutes a day, but 10 minutes is a very, very long time for someone that can't sit still for 10 minutes. For someone that, that loses concentration that quick, 10 minutes is a fucking lifetime. Wow. So yep. um, I, I couldn't get through that either. Back in the security industry, working for a company that you really like now. Mm, yeah, um, very happy with them. Yep. Doing um, RSLs, so pretty chilled. Yep. Um, <laughs> no, nothing, nothing really. Come on, Grandpa. Stuff. Yeah, out the door, yeah, <laughs> you've had too many to drink. That, that's it. It's just a bunch of old people. Like the, the, we'll get the occasional, you know, twenty-one year old walk through the door, but they're nine times out of ten they're with their parents anyway. Like, yeah, it's it's chilled. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. Mm. And they know all this stuff, obviously, and what you've been through. And my boss does. Yeah. So yeah. I've gone through everything with my boss. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so the the company that you're contracted through. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then that's cool. Well, it's good to see you back in the um, in the workforce. Anyway, I guess not being at work. How does that make you feel? Not being at work for so long. Um, I mean, work cover were paying me, so it's not like I was struggling from week to week. It was tough to get back into it, and I think having that that big break, I wasn't allowed to because. Of, yeah. Obvious reasons, there was a lot of things, like anger was another one. Yeah. Um, you know, lashing out at customers and stuff like that was another bad one. Um, so I wasn't allowed to for so long. And then getting, because I tried different avenues of careers and they just didn't work. So I, I feel like the only thing I can do is to go back into security. Yeah. Uh, sorry, what was the question? I went off topic. <laughs> Do you ask me a question? Yeah, the um, the question was, being out of work for so long, I can't remember what the question was, either, but it, it was along the lines of, I'm paraphrasing here, uh, along the lines of being out of work for so long, um, what, what, what was sort of, you, did you feel uh, like 
you had no purpose. I knew it was to heal and recover. So I, I knew it wasn't that I like was incompetent to work. I, I didn't think that. I, I didn't. I honestly wasn't sure if I was going to be allowed to go back to work at all. And I'm still meant to be on light duties. Um, two years later, I'm still only allowed to work six hour shifts. Wow. Um, okay. I work more than that um, just because you sort of got to take what you get sort of thing. Um, not too sure if I'm meant to do that or not, but my doctor's pretty good. Like if, I, if I'll tell him that, you know, I've got a shift and it's this long, he'll, he'll approve me to do it anyway. So it's not like... It's not like I'm going to kill myself if I work over six hours sort of thing, but there's just those guidelines there mm. for if it was worst case scenario and I can't work longer than that, I can say, well, hey, look, I've done six hours, I can't work anymore. Um, it's not so much that I, I, it's there and I can't do it. I think it's standing up for long periods of time. My back starts to really, really hurt. Um, I, then I start to lose feeling in my legs and stuff like that because I've stood up for so long. It's just that that sort of why they've got that six hour thing there just for that. Does it worry you to know that maybe, well, for, does it worry you that you may not be able to do this for much longer if your back doesn't sort of sort um, itself out? So I've been deemed stable with no improvement. So I, I'm not getting improved. I'm not, I'm not getting better, unfortunately. Um, but I don't think I'll get any worse either. So it, I'm getting a pain management specialist now, and then we're going through how to um, manage it better. So we'll just see if there's no sort help. of surgery uh, on on the, in the future. Um, at this stage, is not okay. Um, but there is a possibility that it will happen later on. Um, but yeah, that's that's not through work cover now because. Um, Apparently, in legislation with the Queensland government, um, this bulges and stuff like that, they can't prove that it was due to something, even though I didn't have um, back, back pain before the assault. They can't prove that it was from that. So now I'm on the public system, so I just have to wait a lot longer. Did you have private health cover? No. No, okay. I used to, but I never used it. I was wasting my money. So oh, that's exactly like, how I feel. I called <laughs> them up the other day for dental, and they're like, oh, no, we don't cover that. And I'm yeah. like, what am I paying you for? Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> yeah, no, I totally I get that. It, um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm on, on the public system now. They're, they don't think I need surgery. They've looked at all the scans and stuff. Um, I, don't, I don't really know where we're going with it now. I sort of just have to wait. But they're... they're the public systems paying for uh, pain management specialists and stuff like that. Um, funny enough, work cover recommended that, but work cover also have closed that bit down, so it doesn't really make any sense. They're, they're still trying to help me, but it's it's a legislation thing. That's all it is. Yeah. Like my work cover guy is the best work cover person I've ever spoken to. Did um, you have to go through a couple, or? Yeah, I went through a few. I was getting into arguments with with some beforehand. Um, there was. Was it just because they wouldn't listen, or? Wouldn't listen, wouldn't help, you know, like... Um, you were a paycheck I, I to them. Man, I was in hospital and this bitch from work cover called me up saying, can you go back to work now? I was fucking laying in a hospital bed. Like, that's how... You serious? They were, yeah. So I was like, fuck that bitch, I want someone different. And then they gave me this other guy, I won't mention names, because I'm not too sure if I'm allowed to or not. No, probably not um, a good idea. Yeah, but... Um, his, and say his, allegedly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, he's brilliant. Like, he, he's helped me so much. Um, he, you know, yeah, he, he just bends over backwards for me. He's really good. He does oh, that's whatever great. He can for me. So it's, it's the government that have said, no, we can't. We have to close that bit of the case down for his back because everyone handles pain differently. So they can't scale pain on a one to ten sort of thing. Right. Whereas if it was like a, like if I broke my back from the assault, you know, they can then scale that sort of thing. But because I didn't, yeah, they can't. It seems pretty broken to me. Oh, it's, it, it's it fucked, wasn't the same as fucked, what it was yeah. when you fucking went to work. Yeah, no, it, it is. It is bad, but you sort of just have to take the good with the bad and move on. So that's all I'm trying to do. Yeah. Um. Yeah, just rest as much as I can, but resting, I've heard, it's not good for it. You've got to be active, but then active hurts it and can't win. <laughs> so how's your lifestyle changed? Um, I used to be pretty active. Like, I used to ice skate a lot. 
Um, you used to ride dirt this bikes is a lot. Queensland, bro. Where do you ice skate in Queensland? Oh, Boondle. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Acacia Ridge. Um, yeah, and I, I used to box as well. I stopped boxing before the assault happened, but I've been told I can't box ever again now because of the, the head injury. That, because of how serious it was. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, I've been told I can't get hit in the head again, which is kind of a worry going back into security because yep. hit in the head can. But you know, like I'll, I, I'm, I'm in that. I'm fucking stuck because I've tried other careers and they haven't worked out because I can't yeah. focus. I can't. I can't learn new things now. So it's the only thing I can do. So it's sort of like if I get hit again, I could be fucked. But I can't not work either. Yeah. So it's a catch twenty two. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really stuck with that. <laughs> Tiffany, how do you feel now when he goes to work? Um, well with the new company he's with I feel a lot at ease because they do seem like that. They really care about their guards and look after you. They, yeah. yeah, they make sure that like they're safe. Um, I think Josh was telling me that there was a place that was getting a bit rowdy, so they moved one of the female guards to a different venue. Um, so that, mm. that yeah, move you around and everything if you yeah, get in conflict with with other patrons and everything. Like they really look after you. That's great. Mm. That's yeah. really good to hear. Whereas I know with his previous company. They're just another number on We're a sheet a number. of paper. We're just a person. Yeah, you yeah. That, yeah. Been there, done that. Yeah, yep. Yeah. The security industry. I'm I'm lucky to work work where I am at the moment because, you know, the, they look after me as well. Mm. So, so that's um, what you want. Yeah, absolutely. They, you know, yeah, yeah. great companies. But uh, yeah, a lot of them, I won't name them, but uh, they just treat you like a number. They treat you like shit. Yeah. Really, they just look at you like because they get so. Look, the security industry is so full of shirt fillers. Yeah. And supervisors have to put up with a lot of dumb guards. Yeah. Right. So they get frustrated, and then when a new one comes in, it's Groundhog Day. Mm. And I've been in a situation where I've been, you know, finger pointed at me, and I'm like, Oh, this is not my first rodeo, and I actually give a shit about my job. Mm. I'm not. I'm not some dude that can't communicate on radio, or you know. I, I remember working somewhere. They gave this guy a radio, and he could hardly speak English. Oh, and, and, and they had. And they, it, they try and wire it up, and they can't. They, like, I've had to help someone yeah. put their radio on. And like their earpiece on. very basic stuff here. Yeah. And, and communication is is a big thing. Oh shit! Yeah. There was a post on uh, Facebook that I, I actually sent you the picture and it turns out you've sent it, uh, you've posted it up yourself as oh, well. Oh, yes, yeah, I do remember that, yeah. Um, I wish I had it, actually. Uh, I don't. Actually, I'll pull it up on, um, so I can just read a little bit of it. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's very high-spoken, like it's, it's very true. It is very true and because, you know, security guards don't have the same... Level of respect as police or EMS workers or, you know, all that sort of stuff, which I can understand because there are so many freaking shirt fillers mm. and uh, too many Neanderthals out there as well that don't know how to communicate with people, um, talk their way out of stuff. Instead, they use their brawn, uh, which is just crazy. I had another incident with this previous company as well i had my head thrown through a glass door and again they just didn't give two shits i should have known then, then what? And there not to not to trust them anymore but same company thrown through a glass door uh, yeah my head and um again i had to leave i had to go home after they were nowhere near as bad as what this incident was thankfully mm. um but yeah the cops ended up getting that guy and he went to jail so that's good so, yeah you good. know I'm, I'm happy that justice was served you know, yeah, I'm pissed off with this incident now because they haven't been caught. Are you, are you more pissed off at the police or is it a combination between the police and the the venue? I honestly think it's more the venue, hey. Right. Um, because they, they could have easily given footage of them going up to bars, uh, up to the bar and getting a drink. When you were bar they were going to, when you were the function was, the bar's right next door. So they were going to that bar. Oh, so they weren't just randoms, they were part of a function. Function, yeah. Easy enough to track down. So easy to track down. Because they would have had a guest list. Yep. 
Yep, and you know, someone runs a function too, and their name, you know, prioritises. It, it would have been so easy to to find it. That's how we found out what school they went to, um, because they they left Nudgee College, and then it was a function for that. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't think you can really be angry at the police because I mean they can't just they can make only, up evidence. Yeah, they, they can, can only, only use what, use they've, what got. they've got. Yeah, yeah and if they haven't been yeah. given anything, then yeah, you know. Yeah, so the, the police, I think, have, have done, you know, whatever they can. It's it's more the the venue now for covering their own ass, And now, because they've covered their own ass, now it's me suffering because, yeah, no-one's been caught. I found that uh, that picture, and it, it says, we are a living security guarding, watching and protecting you and your property. And then it goes through a list of everything that police and EMS workers go through you know, uh, we wear a uniform, we are trained to respond to emergencies, we get bullied, we get lied to, we get spat on, we get hit, we get glassed, you know, all this stuff. And it's not okay to assault us either. I, I think that um, because I doing this, uh, this podcast, this segment, Rifles and Sirens, was about emergency service workers and, and the ADF. And as soon as I saw that, I, I thought, I have to include our guys as well. Yeah. Because we deal with exactly the same shit. Mm. People don't realise like, no. that we actually deal with that as well. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. You're just an, another you're person just, to people. The, the, the problem with security is that you're the bad, you're the front, the very front line, yeah. right? And and, and people, you're, you're always the bad guy. Yeah. Always. Course, yeah. You know? So... Yeah. It's a tough industry. <laughs> it, it, it is a tough industry. And, uh, you know, we, we, the restrictions that we're dealt with as well in our job, we, d we don't have in, uh, nowhere near the amount of power that police have, mm. you know. Um, and even they're limited mm. to what they can do. So we, we really do cop it. Yeah. And it, it's, it's really unfair. But, um, I mean... We do it for a reason. We do it for a reason. There, there's a lot of people out there that look at it as a paycheck. So, Yeah, I, I do it because I love it and I like helping people. Uh, exactly. There's, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, it's, I guess, people on Centrelink, especially, you know, they'll pay for the course for them. So a lot of people on Centrelink go into it and they go into it for the wrong reasons and they don't last. Like, I've seen that many guards go into it because they were forced to do a course. They chose the wrong course. They chose a course that wasn't for them, mm. and they lasted like two weeks, and then they leave. You know, it, it's I've been in it bloody five years now, I think, four, four and a half, something like that. And I, I still see myself doing it for many, many years. I want to get into the police eventually. I just don't know if all this issue is going to mm. affect me getting in. It probably will, but we'll yeah. see what happens when, when it comes. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's really sad. And I feel for you, brother, because mm. um, you know you, you've you've got these goals, and now they, they could very well be taken away from you because so shit. because of a small group of people that mm. had no brains in their head. Yeah, you know. So, mate, I really appreciate you making the drive out here to yeah, um, no problem to come into the studio. It's been absolutely fantastic. And uh, it's a bloody harrowing story. Mm. It's uh, it's incredible, and it just goes to show what we do go through, uh, what we can go through. I mean, um, I, I couldn't imagine going through what you've gone through. So leaps and bounds from from that time, but um, uh, I'll just keep working on it. And, and again, if anyone's got any sort of th anything that can help Josh out. Uh, that they think that would help him with his mind or his pain or just his body in general. Pain's the big one. Yeah. Pain's the big one. Pain's yeah, the big uh, one. I don't really just, care about the head. Pain's the big one. <laughs> if anybody knows somebody that knows somebody, <laughs> so 20, 24 seven pain never goes. It's just there. Yeah, well. So just lingering. It's just fucking. On a AIDS. scale of one to ten. <laughs> oh, it's 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 always up there. Like when I'm sitting down, it's it's probably a six. Um, like I, I'm in constant pain now, right? So is, is it chronic? Do they I've class it as chronic? As chronic yeah. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. That's that's shit, man. It's so shit. 
and um, yeah, it's it's yeah. I also got yeah. So I diagnosed with um, chronic um, stable, no improvement. So nothing right. will improve it. I did so, physio for six months. That did shit. I guess the positive, uh, if, if 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 sending this to a current affair or sixty minutes or whatever is going to help you, then I'm, I'm more than willing to do that. What well, what are things that they can look at that the police can ask for, like the the guest list? Can they ask for the guest list? Will they still have it? It's two years down the track, maybe. Um, I know footage is is gone. Well, you got to uh, keep records for seven years, financial records for seven years, don't you? So they'd have yeah, a. Yeah, but that's only if they save the footage, and because they didn't save that footage, it gets <sighs> rolled over. So, yeah. So the the footage is gone of, of their faces. You know, we know. We know, na- I don't know names. I'm saying we as in like police. My supervisor got some names of people in the group that got handed to police. So police know names. Police pretty much told me the most they can do is go to the door and say, do you know this person? Did they assault someone? The minute they say no, the cops are, they're out. You know, like they can't do any more. That's bullshit. Yeah. So, like I said, they're limited to what they can do as yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, oh, I think we'll wrap it, wrap it up there, but yep. um, I want to thank you guys so much for coming in. Yeah, uh, no Tiffany, I, I applaud you for coming in and giving your perspective on this as well, um, for how it affected the people around him. Um, yeah, I, I commend you on that. And, mate, I wish you all the best in the future. Thank you. And I really hope Looking that uh, <laughs> yeah, I really hope that we can get you some help and... Um, Again, if anybody knows anything to help him out, contact me, email me. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys, for coming on the podcast. Not a problem. Thanks for having us. Thank you.